So tips for adjusting the learning rate and the momentum. Uh, so before moving on to these uh, slightly advanced optimization algorithms, uh, we'll revisit the problem of learning rate in gradient descent. Okay. So one could have argued that we could have solved this problem of this slow movement on the gentle slope by increasing the learning rate. Remember that we have this eta and we deliberately chose to be conservative that we'll take a small value for the eta. But what if I just blow up the eta? I could just take a very large eta. What would happen? It will overshoot, right? So what will happen is, I'll see what happens when I take eta equal to 10, okay? So, so I'll see what happens when I take eta equal to 10. So this is step one, step two, step three. It's moving very fast on the regions where the slope is gentle, but it also moves very fast, much faster on the regions where the slope was already steep, right? So when the gradient was actually high, you ended up blowing it further by multiplying it with the eta, which is 10, right? So it's again going to have this effect that you will move much faster in the steeper regions and again you will see these oscillations because you will overshoot your objective. Does that make sense? Right? So it's not that you can always choose a high eta and get away with it. So what do you actually want? What is your wish list? Regulate theta. You want a adaptive eta, right? That it somehow figures out that I'm on a gentle slope, so I should move slowly, uh, I should move fast. And I'm now on a very fast slope, so I should move slow. So this having this one eta is not working for every point on the error surface, right? For everywhere on the error surface. Is that clear? Okay. So, okay. So we'll see such algorithms soon where we try to adjust this learning rate. Okay. Now here are some tips for the learning rate. So how do you, if you're just going to deal with this gradient descent or nag or momentum, how do you adjust these learning rates and how do you fix the learning rate? So a learning rate is typically something known as a hyperparameter. So why is it called a hyperparameter? So what are your parameters? <coughs> Which are learned using the objective function. Eta is not a part of the objective function. You're not computing gradients with respect to that. It's a hyperparameter. So we'll try to tune this hyperparameter. So what you'll do is, in practice, you could try these different values on a log scale. Okay. Next, what will you do? Run this, all these for a few epochs. Note down the dash. Just note down the loss function, right? So run all of these with different learning rates for say five epochs. You'll get some loss, right? Now, which one will you pick? The one which led to the maximum decrease in the loss. So I'll keep that learning rate. And now what you will do? You'll just stick to that. I started off with a dash scale, log scale. Now what will you do? Okay. So now run it for a few, few epochs, figure out which of these learning rates on the log scale works well. Now do a finer search around the best learning rate that you discovered, right? So say point 0.1 was the best on the log scale. So now look at point 0.2, point 0.3, point 0.4, point 0.5. Look at values around it and see which one works better. So this is how you'll tune the hyperparameters. Otherwise, there's a very wide range, right? If you put, tune from 0 0.0001 to 0.1, there are just too many values to consider, right? So you'll have to do this log scale and then a linear scale. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, these are just heuristics. There's no guarantee that will always work or which of these is a clear winner strategy, but you have to try this. So tuning a learning rate is an important part when you're working in deep learning, right? So at least when you're working with gradient descent or nag or momentum based gradient descent. Now, here are some tips for annealing the learning rate. Okay. So there's something known as step decay. So what you can do is halve the learning rate after every five epochs. Can you tell me the intuition for this? What do you expect after five epochs? That you have moved enough and now you're closer somewhere to the solution. So if you're closer to the solution, if you're closer to Phoenix market city, you want to move fast or slow? What will you do? Decrease the learning rate, right? So after every phi, now this is again, what is so sacrosanct about phi? It's just a magic number, right? So this is again a hyperparameter. So you could fix some number of epochs, and after these epochs, I'll just halve the learning rate, okay? Now this second one is what my favorite is, and I typically use this. What I do is I compute the loss after epoch t. I run epoch t plus one, I compute the loss again. If the loss has increased, what will I do? 
I'll just throw away all the updates that I've made in this epoch. I'll decrease the learning rate and again learn, again start this epoch. What do I mean by throw away all the updates? So after epoch t, I'll save my model. I'll save all the w values that I have computed and I'll let it run for one more epoch. After this epoch, if my loss function actually increases, I'll reload this model which I had saved, halve the learning rate and then run this epoch again. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. So I've run till epoch t. I have some values of w's and b's. I'll save this values. I'll just save it as a numpy array. Okay. Now I'll, with the same learning rate that I've been using so far, I'll run the epoch t plus 1. Okay. And I get some new values of w comma b. Right. I'll plug this into the loss function. I'll plug this into the loss function. I'll get two loss values. If this loss value is greater than what I was at the previous time step, that means things did not work out well in this particular epoch. So I'll throw away all these updates. I'll just reload the model which I had saved. I'll just start from where I was at epoch t. I'll decrease the learning rate. I'll make it half and run this epoch again. Right? And hopefully now I should do better because there's something, I'm, I'm just making a hypothesis that the reason I did not get to a better loss function was because my learning rate was not adapting to it. So I'll just halve the learning rate because this solution was good. This was a low loss function. I just want to be something around it. I don't want to make any drastic steps. So I'll just halve the learning rate from there. So then you'll not see this drastic change, right? Your loss function should not improve. So first of all, local minima is a known problem in deep neural networks, right? So what happens is that in deep neural networks, you don't have something which is like a neat convex function as your loss function, right? It's a non-convex function which means there is no one unique minima. There could be several minima, okay? And there are several analyses which show that a lot of these minima are equivalent, okay? So in practice, these are the things that you do. Either once you reach a minima, you just stay there. The second thing that you could do is, you have trained your algorithm, trained your uh, parameters for say 100 epochs and you have stopped now. Now again, go back and start with a different initialization. So you started with some w naught b naught and you have reached to some solution. Okay, keep this solution. Now start with a different initialization. That means if you look at your w b plane, you have started from some other point. That means you started from some other error location. Right? And run this algorithm again and see if you reach a different minima. So the only thing you, the way you counter this is you just try different stochastic things, right? You try to start with 10 different initializations every time reach a minima and then at the end select the lowest possible of these. Did this make sense to most of you? How many of you got this? Oh cool, okay I thought I was just rambling but yeah okay. Fine, does that make sense? To you at least, okay. Does it? Okay, fine. Yeah, so local minima is a severe problem in a lot of deep learning optimization. Okay. And typically people get away by that by just picking up one of these minima. Now the other thing is you could use exponential decay where with each time step you just keep decreasing your learning rate, right? And if this k is 2, that means that every time step you are halving the learning rate. So you just get with something like this, okay? But the reason I don't like this is that you have one hyperparameter which is eta which you are trying to tune and now to tackle that problem you have introduced one more parameter which is k, hyperparameter which is k, right? So it becomes harder to tune that now. And there's a similar thing which is 1 by t dk where you try to use this formula to decay your learning rate, okay? So both of these I typically don't use in practice. I use the second one. I prefer the second one, okay? Now tips for the momentum. Uh, can you make sense of this? You just stare at it, it will just come at you. Okay, let's see. What happens at t equal to 0? this becomes 0, log 1 is 0, this is 2 raised to minus 1 minus 0 which is just 2 raised to minus 1 which is 0.5. So what is your mu t at t equal to 0? 0.5, okay? Does that make sense? Is it fine with everyone or is it confusing? No. Ah, okay, mu max is typically this. Okay, let's assume mu max is this. Okay, fine. 
Now what happens at time step 250? This is 250 by 250, so this becomes 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. The best thing that you learn in this course. And then log of 2 is 1. So this becomes 2 raised to minus 2, which is 0.25. So what is this? 0.75. Okay. Let's do one more. At t equal to 750. Okay, 1 minus 1 by 8, so that's what it's going to be, right? Okay, so then what is happening as my time steps are increasing, what is happening to, what is happening? I am having more and more faith in the history or the current gradient. What am I increasing? Actually, I have made a mistake. Actually, this is mu is gamma. This is not. We did not use mu anywhere, but you guys just went along. So this is gamma actually. Right? That was the momentum term that we had. So as the number of time steps is increasing, my gamma is increasing. That means I am having more and more faith in my no history. Learning rate is eta. Momentum is gamma. So it's gamma into update t minus 1 and eta into gradient at the current time step, right? And here gamma is actually equal to mu. Is there any more confusion that I can add? Okay. So, okay. So, when I say gamma, I mean mu, okay? And so, that's how it is. So, as I'm increasing the number of time steps, I have more and more faith in the history. So that means I don't want to now get distracted by this one update which I'm making, right? I want to go by the history and I am not increasing this gamma or mu indefinitely. I am capping it by a max. So at max, I will have this much faith which is 0 0.999 in the history. Does that make sense? This is again just a heuristic. Do not worry too much about it. So that is how it is.